G'day, welcome to another Curriculum Burst. Here's a very strange question connected with algebra, polynomials, and it's for high schoolers, and it goes as follows. A base 10 three-digit number n is selected at random. Which of the following is closest to the probability that the base 9 representation and the base 11 representation of n are both three-digit numerals? And I've got some answers here like 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. I know I read that out loud, but I haven't really taken it in yet. A base 10 three-digit number is chosen at random. So we've got a number in base 10, something like uh, A, B, C. And what does it mean to be in base 10? Well, it means this is really 100, so it's like A times hundreds, 10 squared, plus B times 10, plus C times 1. So we've got a three-digit base 10 number chosen at random. Got that so far. Which of the following is the closest to the probability that the base 9 representation and the base 11 representation of n are both three-digit numerals? Okay, obviously I'm pausing there because that makes me a little bit nervous. Uh, so this is n in base 10. We want the base 9 and the base 11 representations of n. So like, let's be very clear, what does that mean? It means I've got to write n. Instead of, a, you know, in base 9, instead of working with base powers of 10, I'd be working with powers of 9. So I'd be... 9 squared, excuse me, 9 and 1, and I've got some coefficients of each. Uh, I don't want to use A, B, C again because I bet the numbers are going to be different. And for it to be three digits, I guess I actually want something there, want something there, and want something there. And for base 11, I might as well do it for again. And base 11, hmm, I'm really, I'm really struggling with this question. This has got me a little bit flummoxed. Times 1. Same thing as some power of 11 squared, some power of 11, some, some um, product of 1. Hmm, what am I going to do here? Um, well, I guess I've actually engaged in a strategy already, strategy number two, which is do something. I've done something, at least like written this out in math speak. We really have to pause, but what am I going to do here? Well, let me just focus on one of these. I mean, get the base 9 part sorted out, maybe the base 11 part follows in a similar sort of way. I want, a three, I want the base 9 representation to be three digits. I really want something here. So what's the smallest base 9 representation I could have? Well, I guess it would be a 1 there and a nothing there and a nothing there. So that would be the number 1 times 81 plus no 9s plus 1. So the smallest number with three digits in base 9 is 81. All right. What's the biggest number with three digits in base 9? Well, I guess I want these coefficients to be as big as they could be. So... Uh, what's the biggest digits I can put in here? I guess, uh, no, well, not nines, not nines. I mean, base nines, you don't use nine as a coefficient. You actually go up to one less, up to eight. So the biggest base three, uh, three-digit base nine number we can get would be 888, which is, oh gosh, eight times 81 plus eight times nine plus eight. So that's, uh, what is that? It's, uh, six, four, 648 plus 72 plus eight. 648 plus 80, I don't know, 728. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm liking this. We've chosen a three-digit number, base 10, three-digit number at random, and we want its, its uh, base 9 representation to also be three digits. It means it better be between 81 and 728, but actually it's three digits. We want it to be between 100 and 728. Bingo. So the chances that it would be have a three-digit base 9 representation as well would be the chance of it landing in that range within the numbers from, what, 100 to 999. This is feeling good. In fact, I bet now this is feeling really good. I could do the same sort of analysis for base 11, get a range of what three-digit numbers there are in base 11, get the, like, the ultimate range I want to be in, some, something that works for both, both base 9 and base 11, and hopefully it all falls into place brilliantly. Oh, gosh, this... <laughs> This question had me nervous, but this one, I now feel better about it. I at least feel like there's a plan of, of, of approach here. So I'm going to invite you, carry on with this, and I'll do this work too, and I'll write an essay about this, about this problem, and let's see if we get to the same place in the end. I'm actually now curious, what's the actual probability? Is it 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, or 0 0.7? I think we can do it. So we'll compare answers when we look at the essays to go with this video. All right, thanks so much. Thanks for watching. For more curriculum inspirations material, go to our website. Lots of great stuff there.